Have you ever wondered what a repeater actually is? Maybe you have a vague idea of as a device that amplifies radio signals, but not much beyond that. For today's video, we'll be fully introducing you to repeaters so that you can be the informed ham in the room who knows what he's talking about. We'll go over what they're used for, why you might need one, and what to look for when making a decision. We'll begin with an unboxing so that you can see exactly what to expect when you receive one. Before we dive in, be sure to hit like and subscribe to our YouTube channel so that we can keep making the content you come here for. Now, let's begin. So essentially, the idea with a repeater is you want to extend the range uh, of your radio devices. If you've got a handheld radio or a mobile radio, you're gonna be limited with how far you can communicate by physical obstructions like buildings or trees or hills and also by just the power that you can output through a radio. Uh, a battery powered handheld radio is gonna have you know, a fairly limited range that it can interact with. Um, with a repeater, you can essentially send your signal uh, close enough to that repeater, it'll take it and then rebroadcast it out at a higher power. So if you've got one guy over here and one guy over here and there's a big hill in the way, if you can transmit to that repeater, it takes the signal and then rebroadcasts it. This guy can hear it, even though there's a physical obstruction in the way. Uh, this also works out if you've just got uh, not a lot of physical obstructions, but a huge area that you're trying to cover. Um, that repeater is gonna have more output power than your individual handheld device uh, can feasibly have. This is handy if you're a ham radio club because maybe your friends are spread out over a large area. If you have a repeater uh, located generally in the middle of the area, um, anybody that can hit the repeater can now hit everyone else in that circle. If you're a business, of course, there's a lot of applications for that. If you're trying to coordinate multiple trucks, multiple moving entities throughout your area, um, just set up a repeater in the center point um, and then broadcast out from there to all kinds of other places. And repeaters don't always have to be stationary. Ours have a battery output on the back. You can hook it up to a solar panel or a battery and then have a mobile response unit. Say you're part of a search and rescue team and you're on the side of a mountain. You don't necessarily know what mountain you're gonna be on, but you can run that repeater up there with the truck, set up, you've got your frequencies ready, you can send out your teams. Um, and as long as they're within range of that repeater, they're within range of everyone. With that, let's see what you get in the box. So let's open this up with your very reasonable box cutter. You can come in here. All right. So, in the box, there's a few more things than just a repeater. First off, you should get the repeater testing information sheet like this right here. So, in your box comes the repeater testing information. Uh, this is all information that you've already provided to us, but it's handy to have uh, this sheet with you. Uh, it's got the serial number uh, of the repeater. It's also got the model number, the frequencies that you requested to be set up, the bandwidth, uh, CTCSS codes, uh, the call sign that we've selected for you, the update interval, and also the speed that that CWID is going to come out, which is just your um, FCC required broadcast ID. Uh, the power output that's desired, uh, all of our repeaters have a maximum that's usually in the model name of it, our BCR50s, it's 50 watts, the 40, it's 40 watts. Uh, and then also the sensitivity uh, for the squelch we have set up here, we've got the 12 dB open and then the uh, 8 dB close on there. Um, it's also important to realize that when you're going to program up your radio, the receive frequency and the transmit frequency here are from the perspective of the repeater. So it's gonna be the opposite of what you put into your radio. The repeater's receive, when you're trying to contact it with your radio, is actually the transmit of your radio. You're transmitting to the receiver of the repeater, and then the repeater is transmitting out from there to the receiver of every radio within a uh, range of that. Just a, a common point that it's easy to confuse on there, but good to know. Also in the box, if you order a programming kit, you should get our programming kit. Inside there is the programming kit software, as well as the physical cable that you're gonna be using to connect to the repeater. Um, the USB end here, this is what connects to the computer. And the RJ jack is actually what connects to the repeater. 
Uh, if you've got any more questions about that, we have a whole other video that covers how to do all of the programming and adjusting. But this is an option that you can frequently buy, and I suggest that everyone buys with the repeater. Also, you get a sticky tab with four feet on it. Uh, some people like to put their repeater in a rack mount. Some people just like to put it on the bench. Uh, either way, if you put these four feet on here, they just peel out like this. So you got a little sticky foot there. If you stick those on the bottom of the repeater, uh, it just helps to keep it stable on the bench so you don't accidentally pull it off. And uh, if you're concerned about scratches, it also keeps the bottom of the repeater from getting scratched up. Also, if you order the repeater programming kit, we have a couple of handy dandy application notes here. We have this one here, which tells you all about how to interface with an amateur radio controller and specifically about the CTCSS configurations you can do. And we also have one here in case you want to purchase an MMDVM or some similar device, you can set these guys up for uh, mixed mode analog and digital operation. These are also available on our website, but for convenience sake, we provide the physical documentation uh, along with you in there. And the power cable. Won't do much good to use these things unless you have a way to hook it up. Uh, this is of course for AC systems. If you've got uh, a DC system, like a battery backup or some sort of a uh, uh, solar panel type situation, we can always use uh, the other pins on the back. I'll show you those to you here in just a minute, but this is the primary source of power. Now for the actual repeater. So when we ship the repeater to you, we have these custom made styrofoam end caps and we have this dust cap here that helps uh, keep anything uh, or keep everything secure during the shipping process. Uh, I do suggest that you hold on to these end caps and try not to lose them and try to store them with the original box. In the unlikely situation that something's wrong with the repeater and you have to ship it back, it's a whole lot easier to ship it with these in the original box than it is to try and get uh, whatever mail carrier that you're trying to use uh, to set this up. It's a heavy piece of metal with lots of sharp corners and really this is just the best way to ship it. So try not to throw these away if you can avoid it. Voila! Your handy dandy new Bridgecom Systems repeater. So, here is the BCR50. Uh, all of our repeaters from the, or the BCR series are gonna be very similar to this one. Um, this is a, the VHF model, we also have a 220 model, and we have a UHF model. Uh, but the setup process for these is essentially the same. Of course, on the front here, you can see that you've got your uh, power switch. You've also got a couple of different selector buttons, the main screen, uh, the mic jack, which is also the programming port, and then a few LEDs that light up there to show you what the status of the repeater is. Uh, you can also see here on the sides, we have these tabs already cut out, so if you want to hang this up in a rack, um, you can definitely do that. Uh, of course, it's totally fine to just leave this guy on the bench. Just make sure you stick a couple of these little feet underneath the bottom of it, and it'll be good to go back side of this, you can see we have the AC line in, which is the main source of power for most of these. You've got your receive antenna. You've got the battery backup connections here, which can also be used as a DC connection if you're you know, in a mobile setup or if you're wanting to use some sort of a solar setup. You also have your transmitter antenna right here. Now, if you have a duplexer, then you'll only have this antenna port. You won't have the receive over here. Um, down here we've also got our accessory pin connector. This is the 25 pin connector. Um, you can use this to attach to a, um, an external controller or a link radio or anything like that. Uh, we also have a 3.5 millimeter audio out that's down in here. Um, and you can use that to connect to a speaker or something similar to give yourself uh, a little bit of better audio quality than the little built-in speaker on the front of this can handle for you. For our purpose here, come on over here to the transmitter antenna, and I'm gonna hook up this handy dandy tri-band antenna I have right here. If you've got feed line going out to your antenna, it's perfectly fine. We've got that hooked up. I'm not hooking up a receiver because we're gonna be in the same room as the repeaters, so I know I'm gonna be able to hit it. 
Uh, if you're gonna set this up in an outdoor setting uh, or any kind of a setting where you've got a long range that you're trying to hit, um, this is where you would hook up your other antenna. Same process as this. And of course, if you have a duplexer, you only have the one to worry about. So here is our power cord. Pretty standard design. You can see this little guy here. It's keyed, so it just fits right in here. Make sure it's snug, but not too snug. And then take the other end of this. Make sure that you use a grounded outlet. If you use an ungrounded outlet with an adapter on there, um, you can set yourself up for all kinds of problems, ground loop issues, just noise. Um, always use your real three-pronged outlet. Let's see here. If I flip this on, oh, there it is. So when you first key it up, or when you first turn it on, it'll cycle through and show you the uh, firmware version as well as the model of the repeaters so that you can uh, ensure that you actually have the right one if you've got multiple repeaters in an area. Um, on here on the little screen right now, those dashes like that, that's normal. That's just going to show you if there's a specific channel that's active. Go through here and you can cycle through. We just have one channel programmed in. If you have multiple channels programmed in, you can switch through them here. You've also got um, the volume knob here. You can use to adjust the front speaker and uh, a few other buttons down there that can change different modes. The repeater should work right out of the box. You shouldn't have to tweak with any of this stuff. Um, if you need additional setup stuff, we have additional videos for that. Um, but just for the straight out of the box and plug in and go, uh, that's all you really need to do to get this guy on the air. So I've got my handy dandy UV2 here. And when I key up on this, PTT, you should see the RX, the valid, and the TX light all pop on. So we're able to hit the repeater. It's functional. It's sending its signal. It received from this radio and then retransmit it out for you, and it's good to go. That covers the basics when it comes to repeaters. Whether you're an individual or a business, a repeater comes in handy in a variety of settings. Now you should have a better understanding of how these awesome pieces of technology work. That being said, if you ever find yourself struggling with the topics covered here, feel free to call our support line at 816-532-8451. Our in-house tech team is more than happy to help you on your ham radio journey, whether you're just a beginner or need a helping hand. Lastly, thanks for watching. I'm Nick, KF0EKR73.